Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be going through how to compute circulation, which I'll be using for my panel method codes, and in the latter part of this video we'll go through a MATLAB slash Python code. So we're going to start off with the definition of the circulation in this equation here, where we have the capital gamma, that's the circulation, is defined as the negative of the contour integral over the contour C of the velocity vector dotted with the contour vector. So we have the uh, V over here is the velocity vector in units of meters per second, and DS is the contour vector in units of meters, and so the resulting units of circulation will be meters squared per second. So why do we care about calculating circulation? In our particular case, we're going to be using it to calculate the lift per unit span, L prime, which is going to be equal to rho V times gamma. And I'm not going to go through the derivation of this equation here. I'll save that for another video. But uh, I'll be using it to compute the lift per unit span for airfoils in the panel method code. So L prime is the lift per unit span. And so lift is a force. So the units are newtons per meter. So let's check that all these units make sense. So first, we're going to take this rho v gamma over here. Density is in kilograms per meter cubed. Velocity is in meters per second. And we said that the circulation is meters squared per second. And so you can see that the meters cubed on the top cancels with the meters cubed on the bottom, and we get kilograms per second squared. Now, newtons per meter, how do we get that to equal kilograms per second squared? If you forget what uh, the base units for a newton are, you can think of the F equals MA equation, where the force is, a, uh, is in units of newtons. And so M is mass, A is acceleration, so we have kilograms times meters per second squared. And if you multiply these through, you get kilogram meters per second squared. And so we know that it's newtons per meter. So we just divide this by meters, and we end up getting kilogram per second squared. And this checks out with what's on the right-hand side of the equation. The next step is to define the velocity vector and the contour vector in terms of their x and y components, or their Cartesian components, uh, which are i hat for the x direction and j hat for the y direction. So the velocity vector is vx i hat plus vy j hat. And the contour vector ds is equal to dx i hat plus dy j hat. One thing I forgot to mention on the previous whiteboard when defining the circulation equation that, I, that you can see here uh, is that there's a negative in front of the integral in our uh, circulation equation. But if you have a calculus textbook, there most likely won't be a negative. It's useful to have the negative uh, when you're doing uh, this calculation for aerodynamics, because then you don't have to negate the, uh, the whole term in the lift per unit span equation. But just be aware that in most cases in calculus, you'll have it without the negative sign. But in this case, you'll have it with the negative sign. So now we can use the dot product in the circulation equation right here to write the integral as a sum of the x and y components. So we have the integral written here. We're going to just sub in the these uh, two equations here into v and ds. And so we have negative the uh, line integral of vx i hat plus vy j hat dotted with dx i hat plus dy j hat. And so if we perform the dot product, we have the x components of both, so vx times dx plus the y components of both, vy dy. And you can split this up into two separate integrals. So we have that the circulation is equal to the negative of the integral of vx dx minus the, uh, the integral vy dy. Now, in most of your calc textbooks, you'll see that the velocity vector and the contour vector are given as analytical expressions of x, y, and of z if you're doing three dimensions. And so the resulting integral is actually pretty or relatively simple to compute. But in our case, we're going to have uh, velocity vectors shown in red that are defined at discrete grid points uh, that have a location i, comma j, or an index i, comma j. So here you can see that the discrete grid points are given in black points. And for each grid point, there is a certain velocity vector associated with that grid point. Uh, and so we can also say that the x component and y component of the velocity vector uh, depend on the i, comma j grid point that we're at. And that's the first part of the uh, circulation integral. We still need to define what these dx and dy components are. So how do we define the closed curve? Well, we can just take uh, the grid points down here, the same grid points as up here, just without the velocity vectors. And we can just draw an arbitrary closed curve in blue around which we're going to compute the integral. And you can see that we can specify this arbitrary curve as a function of x and y components, an arbitrary number, n. So the x components for this are x1, x2, dot, 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 xn. And the y uh, components for this are y1, y2, dot, 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 yn. Instead of defining the closed curve as this arbitrary shape that we define with 
n number of xy coordinate pairs. Let's instead define the closed curve as an ellipse that I've shown here on this xy coordinate plane, where the center of the ellipse is at x naught, y naught, and half of the horizontal axis is a, and half of the vertical axis is b. I don't say major or minor axis here because if b is greater than a, then the vertical axis is the major axis. So how do we get the xy coordinate points of every point on the ellipse? We can parameterize the ellipse using uh, the angle theta, and so we can say that theta goes from 0 to 2 pi, so we're getting all around the ellipse, and the points x sub e and y sub e, e for ellipse, can be given as a cosine theta plus x naught, and the y uh, component is b sine theta plus y naught. So why do we want to use this ellipse over just the other arbitrary curve? Uh, well, if, let's just say that you want to use four points for your uh, curve, then you can just say that you're using theta is equal to 0, 90, 180, and 270, and you'll get four points on this uh, ellipse. But now let's say you want 1,000 points, well now you just break up theta from 0 to 2 pi into 1,000 uh, steps, and you solve for x, e, and y, e, and now you have an ellipse defined by a thousand points around the same ellipse. So now we have that closed curve ellipse defined on the grid, uh, but the closed curve doesn't necessarily align with the grid points, which is where the velocity is defined at, as you can see here. So we have the velocity vectors defined at the grid points, and let's say that we're creating this ellipse with eight points that you can see with the blue dots around this ellipse. You can see that none of these blue dots coincide with the grid points. So you can't just say that the velocity at this blue dot is equal to this velocity here because it is something in between based off of the other surrounding grid points. So what we can do is interpolate the velocity from the grid points to the ellipse points. And in MATLAB, we're going to use the function interp2. And in Python, you can use the function rect bivariate spline. And so the result of this is that you have the same grid points here. I've just left out the velocity vector so it's not as cluttered. But now after the uh, interpolation, uh, we can see that at each of these points on the ellipse, we now have the resulting velocity vector. And so now that we have the velocity vectors defined at the uh, points on the ellipse, we can then perform the integration to compute the circulation. So we're just, since we have these defined at discrete points, we're going to use uh, trapezoidal integration, uh, which you might remember from calc class, where over here we have the function of x on the y axis, and we're going to integrate this function from a to b, uh, and we're going to approximate the area under this function as just a trapezoid between these two endpoints, and so that's the same that you would do over here on the integral and uh, on the ellipse. And so in MATLAB and Python, you're going to use the trap z function. Okay, so let's take a look at this MATLAB code, which is a script that I've written to compute the circulation of a vector field. So first we're going to start with the number of points n that we want our vector field to be composed of, and so I'm just computing the uh, the x and y points for this grid. Uh, and then I'm also just going to say that at every grid point, just randomize the value of the x velocity and the y velocity, and then uh, create the mesh grid from the x and y coordinates, because uh, we'll need that for plotting and for the circulation computation. So if I just run this, I'm going to just plot the uh, grid points in black and the velocity vectors in red like we had on the whiteboard. So if I run this, you can see that we have a five by five grid and at every single grid point, we have a random velocity vector shown in red. If I run this again, you'll note that they change um, so that we'll get a different calculation of circulation every single time. Okay, and the next step, I've just deleted that plotting up there. So the next step is to create the ellipse that we want to use as our closed contour. So I specify a, b, x naught, y naught, so it's offset from the origin. Uh, the horizontal axis is the major axis because a is larger than b. And the number of theta, uh, so that's the number of points we're using to define the ellipse is going to be 8 in this case. And now we can feed all that information into our compute circulation function, which I'll show in a second. Uh, and to this function, we, we need to pass through some arguments. So first we need to pass through the contour, which is the ellipse, so a, b, x naught, y naught, num t. We also need to pass through the uh, x and the y velocity components of the vector field. And since we will need to interpolate to get these vel velocity vectors onto the ellipse contour, we also need the grid points x and y. And so those are all fed into the compute circulation function. And so now we'll just click into the compute circulation function, which is up here. And you can see it takes the inputs and it'll spit out these five outputs. So in here, I'm computing the ending angle because the ending angle we don't want to be the same as the starting angle because it'll be a redundant point. Uh, and then T is for theta. So I'm just making an array from zero to the ending angle with the number of uh, points that we want to discretize our ellipse into. And then I'm just computing the, uh, this was x, e, and y, e on my whiteboard, uh, but right now it's for c for contour, so we compute the x and the y points of the ellipse using the equations on the whiteboard. 
Then we use the interp2 function uh, to take in those discretized ellipse points and the x and the y velocity vectors with their respective grid points so that we can interpolate uh, to get the x and the y velocities at those ellipse grid points. And then finally, we're computing gamma by using the equation defined on the whiteboards, negative, and there's a, uh, the parentheses here, so the negative applies to both this one and this one. And we're just using trap z with the x contour and the x velocity, and then trap z with the y contour and y velocity. And the, so these are all being output back into the main circulation script here. So the last couple things are that we're going to print the circulation value to the command window down here, and then we also have the plotting down here. And let's talk about the plotting first. I'm gonna run the code. You can see that the grid points pop up with the black dots and their respective red velocity vectors. And then we also have the ellipse points in blue with their respective blue velocity vectors, which have been interpolated between the grid points. And so you can see that none of these blue ellipse points fall on the uh, grid points, the black grid points, but their values of the vectors are interpolated between the points, so they should be close to their nearest neighbors. And you might see that, for instance, in this case over here, the blue velocity vector looks like it's uh, much longer than its closest vector over here. Uh, and that is just because the quiver uh, command down here auto scales by default the velocity vector. So if we type in auto scale off for both quiver plots, like this, and we run it. Now you can see that the nearest neighbors are uh, more evenly aligned with the lengths of their adjacent red velocity grid point vectors. So right now, since we only have eight points defining the ellipse, it sort of looks like these are just random points scattered throughout our grid. So let's see if we can uh, increase the fineness of this by increasing the points to like 50, for instance. And now you can see there are 50 points defining the ellipse, and so we'll have 50 points used in the uh, trapezoidal integration to compute the circulation, which you can see down here in the command window. And so if I run this, you can see right now it's at negative 0.08. If I run this again, it'll change, and you can see now it's 0.27, and that's expected because we are randomizing the velocity vector field every single time I run it. So every time I run it, you'll expect that it'll be a different circulation value. Since the circulation is changing every time I run it, how can we check that the circulation calculation is actually correct? Let's put in a known vector field. So I'm gonna bring this back to eight. And then up here, I'm going to comment out the randomized vector field. And I'm gonna put one in that has the x velocity uh, at one and the y velocity at zero, which will give us a horizontal flow, which in potential flow is called a uniform flow. And the circulation for this, which I'll discuss in a future video, should be equal to zero. So when I run this now, you can see that all the red velocity vectors are horizontal, and so are all of the blue ellipse points, but it gives us a circulation value of 0.5, and I said that it should have been zero. So the problem is that we just don't have uh, enough uh, ellipse grid points. So let's bump, uh, bump this up to 50 and run it again. You can see now it's decreasing down to 0.013. And let's bump this up to something absurd like 50,000. Run it again. Now you can see we're down at essentially zero. And as I promised before, here's the Python code. You can see that we have the compute circulation Python function, which is the same as the MATLAB, just with the interpolate.rect by variate spline instead of interp2, uh, but the trap z is still the same. And then I have the circulation script, which is the same as the MATLAB code, just now translated into Python. And so if we run this, it should give the same thing where we have the black grid points with the corresponding red velocity vectors, the blue points for the ellipse, and the blue velocity vectors for the interpolated uh, velocities from the grid. And again, or down here, you can see that the circulation is equal to 0.04. For this particular case, we can increase the number to 50, and now you can see a more fine uh, ellipse. So that's how you can compute the circulation from a discrete vector field. If you're interested in the application of uh, this particular code or what this can do, then stay tuned for my vortex panel method videos. If you'd like the MATLAB or Python code, I'll be putting uh, links to my website in the video description down below. Thanks for watching.